Welcome everyone to an introduction to Xamarin. Um, my name is Mark. I work in North Engineering, mainly in the mobile field since a couple of years. But since you're not here to meet me, I guess, I'll start with the topic. So, what is Xamarin? If you think about Xamarin in the big picture, you can think of it as part of the .NET framework if you want to write mobile apps. So we've got ASP.NET, which is used for web, and you've got Xamarin, which is if you want to write apps for iOS and for Android. And you can also do a lot more with it. Um, that's what I would like to show you. Now, the main focus when Xamarin came aboard 10 years ago, so we got the 10 year anniversary this year, and when it started, it was still named Mono, after the same runtime. And the thing that you have to know is, Xamarin people or mobile developers that use Xamarin, they got like this monkey thing. And if your Spanish is as good as mine, it might take you a couple of years until someone tells you that mono is just Spanish for monkey. But they kept this monkey theme going on and on and on. And um, Xamarin is, uh, I think, from Tamarin they took it, and Tamarin is again a monkey, so they, they kept, they stuck to the theme. And um, <coughs> when they started out, they first started out writing it for iOS. So the first incarnation of writing C-sharp on a mobile platform was for iOS, and it was called MonoTouch. Today we call it Xamarin iOS, but the foundations are still in the Mono space. They also made another incarnation which then ran on Android. Now, if you think about Android from a mobile developer perspective, it's, um, it's maybe the nicest platform because you can install it everywhere. You can install it on a Windows machine, on a Mac, and on a Windows machine, and then you can start developing for Android. So from that part, it's, it's super friendly to get started. We can also do the same thing in Visual Studio. We can program for Android. Um, I made here a little sample solution. And are you running? You should be running. Oh, oh. Yeah, so this is the sample solution I want to show you, and um, this is what you typically would get if you start a Xamarin project. So here on the bottom half, we got the platform project. So we got an Android project, an iOS project, and a new WP project. Can everybody see this? I get quite a bit of glare on my end. <laughs> okay, great. So these are what we refer to as platform projects. What we also usually have is a shared project on top. So since we write in C-sharp, if you start coding for a certain while, you not may, you'll maybe start out on Android or iOS, or maybe on Windows, but as soon as you start to get your second platform, you think like, man, I already wrote this for the other platform. It would be like really cool if I could just port it over, you know, like copy and paste. And this is one of the great advantages that you get if you choose the cross-platform approach as Xamarin offers you for C-sharp. So if you would go down the traditional approach and just say, I've got an iOS phone, I'll just take Swift, I'll get cracking on it, and then you want to go to Android, well, you're out of luck. You'll have to start again from a new, you have to start again with Kotlin or Java uh, to rewrite your app, and you cannot really share any code. And in C Sharp, we have come a long way. Like the first incarnations were like a bit better than copy and paste with linking files from one project to the other. And uh, then we had the portable class library, which uh, well, had its limitations, and today uh, we got .NET standards, uh, which really allows us to share in a very, very nice fashion our C Sharp code. So, <clears throat> this is Android. Android, we call main. We have activities. That's like a page, if you want to, uh, on a very abstract level. We got the main page. We got attributes. Main launcher means when the app launches. This will be the activity that's being started, and then on created will be called automatically. Uh, from the system. So this is like Android given. Um, if there are any Android developers in here, you'll probably know this. We say set content view, and there we say this is the content or the view that we want to then propose. The views <coughs> are also located in the resources layout, and the activity main, we can open it up. Uh, it is written in XML, so it's the same XML as an Android developer would be writing, so it's literally the same, so if you've got an Android developer, he can do that. 
And we got a preview. So if we change content on the right side, we would automatically see it. Then here we got the floating action bar button. You also got some little helpers in the code to preview images and stuff like that. Really nice. They did a ton of work in this uh, Microsoft to, to boost this and bring it up to par. Here we see we got an include of content main. So this is another area. And in here, this is just simply a label. Now this does not make a lot of sense, but you could, this is just to show you how you can make custom controls. Now in here we got the string hello world, and if I edit it, you can see it will be live updating on the left hand side, which is really nice if you're doing like some custom controls, because you do not have to really start the debugger to get that. Um, I quickly have to change this XML to, to refresh it, but you can see we also get, if we plug in the UIs together, we get a nice visual experience, um, which, is, which is really great. This really brings down your development time. Now, at a certain point, um, what we now do is in this UI we got find view by ID. This is a special. This is just how you find your elements in Android. It's just how you do it. Uh, it's the Android way. And in there you got IDs that we set, like the text. And by that ID that we define in the XML, we can then find this resource and then we can work with it. So we can now say, uh, set here a string, shared code, which um, is in the platform in the share code, in the hello Xamarin core part, and I just simply put there a string. Again, I know this is not the business logic you usually be writing, but it's just uh, for showing how this can be done. And this project, again, is a .NET standard project. So this means we, later on, will be sharing the string uh, across all the other core platforms that we're running. And I know this is just a string, but we could put, a, put in a calculator, we could put in complex logic, stuff like that. Um, we can start up the Android emulator. Now, this is a bit cheating. I uh, boosted this part about by the factor of four. It's also where you got the recording. And um, <clears throat> there is this issue right now with the Android emulator on Windows. You might have heard about um, all the Intel chip flaws that they had. Um, Microsoft, the emulator from Android runs in Hyper-V, which is really great because that means you can have Docker and the emulator running side by side. It also slows down the thing. What we now see is we got the string here. So this is Android running on a, on a Windows um, machine. This is the official emulator that is released by Google. So there's no magic there. There's no special thing. Uh, the nice thing is if we get it from Google, um, we do get all of the goodies like push notifications, Play Store stuff uh, to test on an emulator. Now, the reason why I bring up Hyper-V is Hyper-V fixed the Spectre bugs. So if you develop on a Windows machine, it used to be like super fast, then Spectre was detected, then Microsoft fixed those security flaws, and then the emulator took a hit. Right now they're trying to boost again performance. I just got an update today, and it's again much better if you tried in the past. But you still will find a lot of Android developers that prefer a phone to just plug in over a USB, and then you can debug. So that's no problem. You could just simply plug in a USB phone, uh, over USB a phone into your uh, Windows machine, and you can go. You could actually even do it over Wi-Fi, but usually USB is just a tad quicker. So that's what usually people use. So this was Android, and that's actually quite straightforward uh, to develop in, in Visual Studio. Uh, the next thing, or the next platform that I would like to show you is iOS. Now, has anybody already developed for iOS in here? Okay, so we got two people, they know exactly what I'm meaning. Uh, so when you develop for iOS, what you usually need is a Mac. So you need somewhere a Mac in the same network, so I got a Mac here, uh, to show you later on some demos. They have to be in the same Wi-Fi. That's why I brought with my mobile hotspot, and um, <coughs> these all running together. And like that, you then can develop code. You cannot, uh, you need the Mac for the tool chain. It's a Mac thing, it's not a Xamarin thing. It's not Microsoft that forces you to buy a Mac. It's uh, just that the tool chain to develop for iOS is only released for Mac, and licensing stuff and whatnot forces you to run it on Mac OS. So, <clears throat> long story short, this is again the same solution. So what I did is I changed the starter project. Uh, the easiest way how I like to do it is up there. You can just switch between the projects and then it will be automatically selected. Uh, let's choose the iPhone simulator. We could also deploy it on an iPhone. And 
you connect it to your um, build agent, also in Visual Studio. There's a nice step-by-step -step tutorial you do it the first time, and then you get all these simulators. These simulators are actually on the map, so they're not installed on Windows. So if you're not connected, you will not see any simulators. Uh, next step is the entry, which is the main. Main does nothing else than opening app.delegate, and app delegate is where all the uh, lifecycle logic is from an iOS app. In here, uh, what we do is we start um, uh, the, the storyboard, gets, uh, so the view gets started. And behind each view, before we have activities, a view controller, a UI view controller. So if you're an iOS developer, you'll know UI view controller, of course, no brainer. Again, we find here a label which text we set, and the UI, um, the, there are a couple of ways how you can develop UIs in iOS, but one way is with the storyboards, the designers. Um, the differences between Windows UIs, you've got all your UIs in one, in one file, and you can edit it there. It's pretty much drag and drop, if you want to say so. Um, you've got a toolbox, these are all the controls that you have, so you can just drag and drop them over. You can make your layouts in here if you want to, and <coughs> so we can, we can drag on another label, and uh, yeah. But since we've already got one, um, let's get rid of that. Let's have a look at this one. Now, what you can see here is you've got the properties, and in the properties we set the name to the label. I'm very creative. So if we remember the label that's been set there, we can go again back to the view control, and that's actually also the variable that's been generated in the back for you. And over text, we can again set <coughs> what the property, that's what the label should then later on display when the view is being loaded. So all that's left now to do is um, start the simulator. Hello. No, this is not what I wanted. The main reason why I recorded these things is so we can save some time, which I'm now totally not doing. Um, huh, interesting. Um, well, yeah, so let's, let's do this the old-fashioned way. Um, so I'll connect here to my MacBook and crime over here. Just please ignore the error. I don't know why that's there. Uh, so it's now connecting uh, to my MacBook Pro. The great thing is when it's connecting, it's also checking the tool chain on your Mac. So if it's out of date, it will automatically update it while, while it's connecting. Great, so now we got this connection. Uh, let me just quickly select iOS. Then you probably want the simulator and now we get the iPhone SE. So now we can start the compilation over here. So this is now starting up. Now the simulator is actually uh, a remote window from the Mac. So the simulator is actually running on the Mac, the NC. Um, the entire connection is encrypted over SSL or HTTPS, so that's secure. And the Mac just has to be in the same network so that it works. Um, now the app launches up, and let's see, I think of a breakpoint in here. So you can also see, um, so I put a breakpoint in here, so we can also do debugging and all that. It's, it's just as you would expect it, it's just, just works. Uh, but it's actually quite crazy if you think about it, because the code runs on here, but I see it on here, and then I can debug in here, and uh, you can also have a look at, at variables and, and all stuff like that. So it's, it's pretty much as you, as you would expect to, to be. And uh, when we let this run further, you can see this, uh, the simulator is running here. Now what's quite cool about having a, an iOS simulator in Windows is you can have touch. So <clears throat> I can use touch controls uh, on, my, on my Mac, uh, which I otherwise would not really have. Um, which is uh, quite funny because no Mac's got a touch screen, they've got a touch bar, 
But that means if you want to do pinch and zoom and stuff like that, um, you can you can actually only do this uh, on a Windows computer, which is a bit. I think it's fun. I mean, you can do it on Mac, but you have to do this special keyboard combination and mouse gestures. So yeah. So this was um, iOS, and again, you can you can see we could reuse the .NET standard code. So pretty much straightforward what we did there. Now, whenever I show this um, that you need, or whenever I say like you need a Mac to, to develop iOS, there's always someone that says, yeah, but it can't be virtualized, this thing. I mean, especially when you talk with IT guys, you know, like if you go into a big company and you say, I need a Mac, it's always fun. Um, they will say, well, you know, we could do a virtual machine and stuff like that. And uh, yes, you, you can, you can do it. Um, but it's, it's more like a legal thing. And I mean, you might want to just ask Samsung about Apple's lawyers. You know, they, they make some experiences there. So it's, it's pretty much a gray zone. And I'm no lawyer. So it just, I just want to give you this advice. You know, it's Sienna Eula. And uh, yeah, I mean, perhaps this is one of the reasons why Mac sales have risen in the last couple of years. I, I don't know. So long story short, can you emulate or can you make a, a Mac virtual? Yes, can you run it on Windows? Yes, 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 you can do it. Uh, will your boss be happy with that? Probably not, probably <laughs> not, just, where's that? Now, of course, since C Sharp is from Microsoft, what about Windows? Can you run a Xamarin app on Windows? And the thing is like, yes you can, but it's technically not Xamarin, it's just the product from Microsoft. So you can have a, a UWP app, of course, uh, which you can use. And again, you can just simply switch over to it uh, with the starter project. And in here, the entry point is usually the app.xaml. Um, uh, the app.xaml ZS is where the logic is in. And in here, you've got again the same startup code as we saw before in the app delegate from iOS. And <clears throat> right around here on line 69, we can see that we got uh, the main page, which has been referred as the startup view. So if we go into main page, um, we got here again the code behind from, from the page, uh, pretty pretty nice tight. And in the XAML, we got again the UI, UI so it's all again in XML, <coughs> uh, which we all know and love. And again, of course, you got here the live previewer. This is just this is just what you get out of the box with the UWP. But again, what we can do here is um, we can uh, share, we, what we can do is we want to have our shared part of core code again executed on UWP and that's again where the same architecture and, and uh, view models and stuff you can reuse. So if you use this route we can get a great lot of code reuse and we can then again set um, the text label here and execute it again on the local, on the local machine <coughs> and we'll see the same results of the string appearing um, on this sample. Now these are, this is like the most basic setup that you can think about if you want to explain how Xamarin works in a nutshell. So you've got your platform projects, which you then change as your startup project, then you hit F5 or you click onto debug and it will just usually just work. Uh, so that's that's like the, yeah, the big, the big ta-da. And the really nice thing is you can do this all with C-sharp. You can also do it with F-sharp, uh, VB, you can do the share part, but not really the front end part. And um, yeah, so this is uh, what what you think about of Xamarin or how it all started out. So if we look at the architecture from this grandiose app, I think I'll release it, probably price it about five bucks, I'll be rich, right? I mean, everybody's been waiting for the shared string app. So, what, what the basic architecture is usually, you got your native platforms, where, we, where you can write your UI stuff, and then you got your shared app logic. And in shared app logic, <coughs> what's really nice about that is you share it with .NET standard libraries these days. And .NET standard, if you, if you don't know it, is a way how you can write a library that runs on, on the .NET framework, on .NET Core, and on Xamarin. So if you write your code in .NET standard, it's just a normal DLL that will be afterwards compiled, you can reuse that code without having to do any, any further magic. And you get a ton of services that are then available with that. 
So you can write your, you can write HTTP client code, you can write SignalR, you can write all those things, you'll just, you can just consume them and write them in your shared app logic. Now, this is Xamarin or Xamarin Native or Xamarin Classic or, well, it's not really a name, let's just call it Xamarin. And it's really cool because you can share a, a ton of code on your business logic, but you have to write all the UI again, like what? Like, I have to, oh, again, like every time for each platform, and so, yeah, you have to do it. So, what often people want is, they don't just want to share the app logic. They kind of also want to share the UI. <coughs> that would be really great. And that's where the Xamarin team brought in Xamarin Forms. So, what Xamarin Forms actually is, it, it's a UI library, more or less, that comes with some layouts and pages that are commonly used and some controls that are on every platform. I'll not go through these all now in detail, I'll spare you of that, but important to know is there are more controls on each platform than are in Xamarin Forms usually. But since Xamarin Forms builds up on Xamarin, you can always drop back down. So, <clears throat> what I now would like to show you is how do we create the Xamarin Forms application? Like, like from scratch. File new project. Just to show you how much voodoo there is if you want to write Xamarin. I mean, it's, it's tough. It's tough. So, this is Visual Studio 2019, so I can go into mobile app Xamarin Forms, which is pretty much uh, the default these days. Um, <laughs> I'll put it on the desktop so I'll find it later. Got app two, good. And we will create a new solution. Um, we're going to create and what Xamarin now asked me is what kind of app would you like to do? So you get uh, all kinds of, uh, of different um, prepared solutions that you can start with. If you know what you're doing, you probably want to start off with the blank solution, um, but I'll just take the master detail because that means I'll, I can show you some more code than just a, a blank site. So I'll also include UWP, uh, iOS and Android, and we could also already provide a, an ASP.NET call backend for this entire thing, and then we create it. Now, the setup that you will be seeing from the CS project will look quite familiar as the one that I showed you before. So we got again our platform projects below and then we got again a shared um, .NET standard project at the top. What don't you want to show me? So this is again .NET standard. We now got a couple of NuGet files in here but uh, nothing really special. If we look into UWP, um, there is again this app sample, again the main page. And if we look into the main page, <coughs> what we see is the main page um, loads the application. Uh, this is a Xamarin form special and we call the app. <coughs> the app in this case is this class up here. The same thing is true if we go into uh, iOS in the app delegate, we see finish launching, there's some Xamarin Forms initialization, load application, new app. And if we look into Android, we go again into our main activity, into on create, we see in here the same, or pretty much the same uh, starting up sequence that's happening, and again, a new app is created. So, what I've just shown you here is in the platform projects, there is still some code that is written but it's like a couple of steps of code and you're off into the share code, which is what we want. Because we want to write all of our views and everything actually in a, in a shared fashion. So if I now look at the main page, uh, which we have got here, it's again written in XAML. It's, it's not WPF XAML, it's not UWP XAML, it's again a different XAML dialect. So if you are coming from one of those platforms, it's pretty much who moved my cheese the first couple of days. Mm -hmm and then you'll find your things, and then you'll be rolling. But it's, it's a lot quicker to start out in Xamarin Forms than if you, like say, you come from WPF and you go to iOS. Because iOS is again a pretty much different UI layout concept, 
Uh, Android is a bit closer, but this is much closer to home if you want to say so. So in here we got the master detail page um, that I selected before. Um, we got here uh, we got here a view that we're loading, which is the items page. And um, what I still wanted like to show out to you is this on platform. Now this on platform, since we're now writing cross-platform code, there are sim there, sometimes you just want to have something a bit different on one platform than you want to have on the other platform. Like you want to have the, the margin a bit different or stuff like that. And this is exactly what on-platform brings you. So even though we're writing cross-platform cross code, we can still adopt a little bit to each platform that we're running on. For the web developers, we can adopt to each browser that we're running in, okay? So it's the same story here. It's just different, different operating systems and all like that. So this is uh, what we can do here. So here we say on platform, if we are on iOS, load this image. This is what's basically standing here. Um, <clears throat> so if I now start up this application and we take a look at it on UWP, compiling. So this is actually all fresh. So this is no, no making up for time. Um, if it would have gone with the blank app, it would have been a bit quicker, but we got time, right? Because the city looks way more pretty, we don't have any more of the excess before. We got a nice Xanagon. That's the that's the kit of these days like to call it. Uh, starting up, debugging. So this is the wonderful master detail page. So this is the master, these are like the details. And you can see how we can simply just switch in between. And if we now start up the same project uh, on iOS, um, we will get exactly like the, we will reuse the, the exact same UI layout which we have been using before. But, um, we uh, get it entirely compiled for iOS. So what's happening now is this entire application will be uh, recompiled for iOS and running there. And while that is happening, uh, the really nice thing about Xamarin Forms <coughs> is it's based on <coughs> MVVM. So who in here has already worked with MVVM? Okay, couple, nice, nice. Uh, so you get baked in into the framework, you get already a few helpers for writing MVVM, so you will find um, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, Xamarin forms are actually written um, in an MVVM style. We get the command we already get from Xamarin forms, so it's again it's pretty much straightforward uh, how we develop these uh, apps <coughs> on on all these other platforms. Again, we see um, we got here this this app, uh, and if there is any stutter, it's usually because of the Wi-Fi. So if you want to make a nice recording of your app, you might not want to take the simulator, but you want to do it on the device. And um, so this is Xamarin Forms, or how you can write Xamarin Forms apps. So the main go the main benefit that we get from Xamarin Forms is, um, additionally to all the logic that we could share, like view models, services, models, and and and. And those tend to pile up. I mean, you've just got a small app that has to talk with the web service, shows you some forms. Um, these tend to pile up, but you can also show your UI. So often this is uh, a great time saver. Are there, are there any questions? No. Does anyone asleep? No, you always have to, after lunch, always have to ask. You never know. So if you fall asleep, just make it please quietly. Don't wake up your neighbor next to you. <laughs> real hassle sometimes. Uh, so <clears throat> Xamarin Forms loves XAML. So XAML is baked in, so it allows you to structure UI in a nice way. You can make styles, you can extract them, you can put them together, you can make your, your resource dictionaries love. Um, are, there, are, there, are there any WPF developers in here? Okay, we got a few. Nice. And any any Windows 8 developers? The only one? Okay, that's what I pretty much expected. <laughs> uh, so the, the mantra that you can say is Xamarin Forms is like write once, run everywhere. And we have heard this before, and it's horrible. I mean, really horrible. I'm looking at you, Java. Um, <clears throat> so what we can do is we can write once, run everywhere, and still look awesome. And this is something 
that the Xamarin team has been working on quite heavily. And with the, they, they released a new version the day before. So with the version before that, they brought in uh, visuals. <coughs> and what visuals allows you is to um, write code that comes along with a app theming style. To enable visuals, what you have to do is on the platform projects, you will have to in install the visual material uh, NuGet package. So that's an additional package that you have to install. But later on, what, what it will allow you is to write your app in a material design way. Um, material design is, is the design specification from Google. And the reason why Microsoft chose to go with material design theme is because Google already ported it partially over to Android, so they only still had to do quite a little work to get it really nice and running uh, on iOS and therefore in, in Xamarin. The down part of that is uh, Google looked at the numbers of UWP apps and thought, not quite worth the bother. So at, at the moment, visuals are only available for Android and iOS. But those are also probably the, the platform that you're targeting uh, with your mobile apps since uh, Windows Phone is, uh, is on more. Yeah. Um, I, I was a fan of Windows Phone, so I'm just taking a moment of silence here. Um, so after this will be starting up, you will see that um, the app that I'm showing you will come along in a, in a Google-esque style, in this material theme style. And the design that I had to do to get this material design is actually quite small. Uh, I, I can define a property where I say how I want to render my visuals. And uh, with that, uh, all I can, I can set it on the top level, like on the app level, then everything will be material design. I can also set it on a, on a single uh, UI element and we will then get uh, the material design. So if we like going to activity indicators, like uh, are there any Android people in here? I, I know it's, it's starting to be an exercise in here. Okay, we got one person. Can you please confirm that this is the loader from, from material? Head nod, maybe? Yes. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Sir. <laughs> everybody, else is, everybody else has got an iOS phone, really? So if I now ask who's got iOS, everybody will raise their hands and who's only here for the free food? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so, so this is like really nice. Um, one that I really like is... Uh, oh, where are you? Cards, 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 cards. So this is something that uh, looks really nice uh, when you slide it over. So what we got here is this gorgeous material design button with a slight shadow and if I click on it it gets this nice ripple effect do you see that the splash effect isn't that nice I mean that's just mm. no that's that's what it's details people details yeah and we also see like a nice little shadow here we got a card without shadow we can make a border so we got all these property sets on this uh, material design uh, that we can still set and this allows us to create a UI that will look the same on iOS and on Android. And sometimes that's what you want. I mean, how often do you work together with a designer that comes with one design for iOS and one design for Android? Oftentimes, they will come with one design. And this allows you to create visuals <coughs> which can then be shared across platforms and will give a nice, coherent uh, design experience. Now, when um, Microsoft launched Visual uh, in preview, they, they made a shout out to the community and they said, guys, take your favorite app that you got, it's just an app that you got in the back of your mind, invest an hour of your time and just show how far you can get with cloning this app. So this is what the community did. So you can see um, like a Gmail copy here. So on the left, you got the proper Gmail, on the right, you got the ones that they made with, with, with material design. Um, to be fair, in the end, the people, they ended up investing four hours on average in these designs, but, you know, developer, one hour, four hour, I mean, it's, it's okay. 
So yeah, uh, they like someone copied here the LinkedIn design, and we got some WhatsApp samples down here. We got some nice round, um, round images which are still in uh, card view up here. So you can see what Visual actually allows us to really is to write nice applications without having to be this absolute UI crack. So that's really nice. Now, when I wrote this presentation a couple of days back, when I was prepared for this talk, I was like, okay, cool. I still want to show you the next version that's coming out. Zarin's 4 Dota preview, just, just so you know what's around the corner. Now, two days ago they released it, so I adopted this slide. Preview's gone. Um, we're here. Uh, what Xamarin 4 4.0 brings is, apart from the, the UI um, visual elements that uh, are also now uh, part of this, or we still have to install next, uh, additionally, is um, collections in, and lists in Xamarin Forms. Now, whenever you talk with a mobile developer, collections uh, are always uh, a bit of an issue because you've got like tons of elements. It has to be really speedy and snappy, and usually you've got then the designer on top that says, oh, but I would like to have them next to each other, and I would like to do something that's fancy with it. And that's always a bit um, a design and uh, performance play that you have. Same for web, actually, on mobile. This story is a bit, a bit iffy. So what we used to have is this beautiful thing. So this is like the standard uh, list view template that you have. Um, but with the new collection view that's been released, uh, you can now make tiles. Um, that's really cool. So you can also say, uh, I want to have tiles running horizontally. So think of Netflix on your phone, where you can swipe along the movie, stuff like that. Uh, these features have come in. And again, this is like an upgrade to uh, the stuff that has been coming along. Now, <clears throat> another thing that has come is the shell. Now with Xamarin Forms, Xamarin introduced the shell. What is the shell? Well, as the English term says, it's, it's the outside, it's the packaging, it's the wrapping, it's where in the shell you put the rest of your app. Uh, with Shell, they introduce new concepts. So they introduce new concepts for your navigation, so you can now put everything into, a, into the shell and structure everything there, which makes it um, nicer and easier to... Yeah which makes it nice and easier to structure all of your um, uh, applications, how you want to look at them. Now, Shell is again only available for iOS and Android. Um, the community is actually working on it to bring it over to UWP. And <coughs> I can even let this connect in the background which is nice, so we can talk a bit here. So what you have new is, before I show you the app SAML file, new what you'll get is an, apps, is an app shell file. In that app shell file, what you will do is you can define how your app shell reacts. Um, you can have fly out headers, you can have fly out uh, items, you can define your tabs in here. So what you do is you just literally, the entire structure of your app, you can define now at one place in the shell. What also came along with Shell is a new way of navigating. So before we had the navigation service, new we got routing. So this is again a concept that we got from the web. Um, you can give in URLs. So if you get like a link from externally, start to up your app, you give with the URL, it knows where it has to go. Before, everybody built their own thing. So now it's, it's baked in. The old way is still there. It's not going away. So if you've got existing Xamarin Forms app, you can still reuse them. But with Xamarin Form Shell, it, a lot of interactions just got a lot, a lot easier. It's like experience that the team got. And <clears throat> you can see uh, here we got another fly out item. Um, here we got uh, tabs, um, which we then say this is the route, what is the title, the icon, and we then say the shell content. So what is what shell this tab actually display? We then just say it's the data templates local main page, which is again um, the page up here, local main page. So this shell tab will then visualize um, this UI. Now, I know it's a bit, it's, it's a bit strange, but um, you're actually a lot quicker debugging on, on a Mac over a slow Wi-Fi that you do with your iPhone than if you start the simulator. Uh, if we've got some time, I'll show you how this is in life. Um, but <clears throat> it, it takes a bit more time. 
So do you, do you have any questions for the shell or Zara Informed? I have a question. So now you develop uh, an app that looks the same on iOS and, and, and Android. And from a developer's perspective, from a design perspective, maybe it's nice. But from a user's perspective, it's not. I'm just putting that in. Because me, as an iOS user, I'm used to the iOS look and feel. And then all of a sudden, there comes this app that doesn't look like an iOS app. In that case, I would rather have the app look, have the iOS look and feel for the iOS deployment and the Android look and feel for Android. What do you think about that? Um, yeah, it's a true point. And no one stands in your way to do that. I mean, the, the visuals is uh, you, you, it's opt in. So you can still do two separate apps, you can still use your controls. The nice thing is, you can even say, uh, I said before, I can like on the top layer of my, of my app, I say, I want to now use material design. I can still say this button is still the default. So that's not material design. And so you can, you can mix and match if you, if you choose to do that. But um, there are quite a few apps in the store uh, which actually want to have this one look. Uh, so they've got like that one design. Uh, so if you, if you think of the Swiss National Railway app, if you open it up on Android, it looks pretty much the same as it looks on iOS. And sometimes you just want to get that feel. And if you want to get that feel, this is a really great route to yeah. go down to. Yeah. And uh, another thing uh, which is really nice about visual design is um, they announced that build that uh, Windows, Microsoft, they got their own design system. It's called Fluent, and the implementation of the incarnation is called Fabric. I'm not a designer, I've got no idea what that means. But So Fabric, which is Fluent developed, uh, will come to Xamarin Form. So that means if you've got Outlook installed on your phone, well, that's like the, the fluent design that Microsoft has developed. Or on Windows 10, you've got your calendar down here. Uh, this, this is also the fluent, fluent design um, that you get. Now, <clears throat> what we have here, this is the flyout. So if I click on here, you can see um, these are all the flyouts that we have. Uh, we also got like this nice animation up here. Oh, what did I do? I, I opened the shortcut. Uh, yeah, big, two big fingers for the screen. Um, <clears throat> so uh, what we got here is we got the the new collection view over here, um, which which uh, just allows to to put images side by side. Now, if you never did this or you never wanted to achieve this, you just go like, eh. If you ever had to do this, you go like, oh, now we're talking. This is <laughs> this is what I've been looking for for ages. Okay, so this is really cool. Even if you've never done it before, this is actually really cool. But this is now here. It's native supported. It's it's fast. Uh, this is this is great. And and again, um, if I uh, I can also what's also came along is you have got different ways how you want to do your tabs. Uh, you can have bottom tabs. Uh, some people prefer the tabs on top. You can even make top and bottom tabs. Uh, just mix and match like you want. So it's really cool, and you do it in a central space, and again, it will be running on, on iOS and Android. So, another question that you sometimes hear is like, is Saren still a thing, like in 2019? And um, yeah, it is actually quite, and it's not just uh, Microsoft that's quite heavily investing these days into Xamarin and the whole of the development experience. It's also the community. So these are all people that are not working for Microsoft and have contributed to the release of Xamarin Forms. So uh, if you start developing, you'll see there is a, there's a quite vibrant community contributing to this and sharing their opinion online. The entire Xamarin stack, so all the libraries, Xamarin iOS, Xamarin Android, Xamarin Forms, it's all on GitHub, so it's all live. You can, all, you can view through everything, it's really nice. Now, I've been asked before this, you know, like, Mark, you know, I should say Xamarin or Xamarin Forms, and like, what, what to choose, and what, what happens if I choose one? Will I ever get, again, back to the other one? So, general rule of thumb, if you're starting a new app today, you most probably want to use Xamarin Forms. The only reason why you not want to use Xamarin Forms is when you've got a lot of custom visual designs that you want to implement. You can, you can, when you use Xamarin Forms, you can always drop back onto Xamarin Android and Xamarin iOS and UWP and make custom renderers and then pull them into the XAML of Xamarin Forms. But if you 
spend 99% of your time writing custom renderers, you're probably quicker if you use the classical approach. Otherwise, you'd probably be most happy with Xamarin. Now, when I started this talk, I told you Xamarin is the way to write .NET code for mobile. And with .NET, I mean C-sharp, F-sharp, and on um, But what's cool about Xamarin Forms is, since it's uh, mostly a UI library, what it actually does is it abstracts the platform implementation. So here we got the entry. Entry is a, an entry field where you can enter text. So this is how entry has been implemented in Xamarin Forms. And what you do is you got an entry and you got entry renderers, which are then have to be implemented on each platform. So on I, iOS it's the UI text field, on Android it's the edit text, and on Windows you got the text box. And those properties will then be mapped to the internal entry properties so you can access them cross-platform. What's really nice about this is this is extensible. So while Microsoft mainly focuses Xamarin Forms and Xamarin for mobile development, what the community has done is they have brought Xamarin Forms to Linux. So you can write Xamarin Forms app that run on GTK Sharp. Uh, GTK Sharp was, is also what's used to, be, to, to uh, implement Monodevelop, which is an IDE for writing C Sharp and Linux. Um, you can write F Sharp apps that run on your TV. Uh, Samsung, Tizen, you can write Xamarin Forms app for it. And yes, this is Edge. This is an Internet Explorer uh, symbolizing all the other RAM eating. Uh, brethren of it, you can even write Xamarin forms for the web. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. So let me quickly show you this uh, because this will be good. Um, so the the implementation that's been used is called We. You can you can remember it object oriented UI. So O O U I. Um, otherwise, you never know how many O's to enter. Um, we, you can either run it, um, it's Blazor copied actually from We. So you've got two modes how you can operate it. You can have it render HTML and JavaScript, which will then communicate back with web sockets, and you have the entire thing running on your, on your server. But you can also develop it as a web assembly. So that means everything will be running on the client. Uh, this is web assembly. So when I make a change in here, I'm ready for some text. Uh, I can now say I'm ready for the next break soon. Hello. And you will see over here the entry field uh, gets updated with this text. And all this is actually happening in here in my browser in Edge, the new preview, which is Chromium. It's really great. You should try it. Um, just a little side thing. Um, of course, I can also, uh, I could change here some, some others I've got here, bottom right, so let's see how good my UI design is, it's actually really horrible, just, just warning you, this could go either way, so you can see it's, it's all live, but what's really cool is this is all running in the browser, so over here we got our, our classical um, XAML from, Win, uh, from, from Xamarin Forms, and it's all compiled, it's all transpiled over to HTML or wasn't, and then you can let it run on the fly. So this is, this is quite cool. So what you could do is, you could actually write for every platform, literally, uh, with Xamarin Forms. This is what for Blazor as well? What? Blazor? What is Blazor? I think, that, no, the problem, is with, <laughs> the, the problem with Blazor is it's a closed system. So you don't really get any feedback out of it. So for Xamarin Forms to work, you would have to, the controls that shut off of so that's a bit of a problem. So what I, sh what I showed you is <coughs> Xamarin Forms, Xamarin Forms is just literally everywhere. You can, you can write WPF apps with Blazor, there's even a console implementation, how you can write console apps with Xamarin Forms. It's, it's everywhere. It's just a small word of caution. Microsoft focuses on the mobile part. So all the other desktop parts, they're mainly community driven. Some of them are more stable than others, but before you now go back to your boss and say, hey, throw out the old code, we'll now make everything with Xamarin Forms, I warn you, okay? 
I've warned each and every one of you, <laughs> it's, it's not 100% uh, there, but they take community contributions, so just, just get part of the game. When you talk about Xamarin and mobile development, um, you always get this question. Now, the, can you do this with Xamarin? Can you do this with Xamarin? Or can you do this with Xamarin Forms because it's different than Xamarin? Which I hope you now all know it's, it's pretty much the same. Xamarin Forms just layer on top of it. And um, this is all that you have to really remember. It's like, yes. <laughs> yes, you can do it. Um, everything that can be done with Objective-C, Swift, or Java, or new Kotlin, you can do with C Sharp and Visual Studio with Xamarin. So if a new feature comes out with iOS 13, you will be able to use that feature in Xamarin. You can do all the AR kit demos that are right now there for iOS. You can do all the artificial intelligence stuff that's out there today. But the right answer that I sometimes give, and that's because I'm a smart ass, is yes, add more. Because <coughs> I showed you before, we use .NET standard to share our code. And that means we got NuGet. We got all the NuGet goodness in the world that we can use that's been developed for .NET standard. One package that if you start developing Xamarin, you will get this uh, pretty much in the default template is Xamarin Essentials. If you've already got an existing app, check this out. A lot of the, exist of the former plugins are now in here. This gives you uh, a ton of functionality extra into your app. So if you want to uh, copy something to the clipboard, if you want to get your geolocation, if you want to open the Maps app, if you want to open the browser, if you want to share something, if you want to send a text, if you want to open the phone dialer, it's all there. And it's, and it's all cross-platform, so implement it once and you're good. Now, <clears throat> this, uh, I, I was also asked about showing you how caching works. And there are many caching libraries out there. Uh, one that's been developed recently is uh, this thing called Monkey Cache. And when you talk about caching in a mobile environment, uh, what you always have to think about is, do you want to have an offline application, so you install the app once and it should always work, or do you just want to introduce heavy caching? So heavy caching means once you call the server for an image or something, you will keep it there and you'll just update it sometimes uh, when you need it. Oftentimes, what you're actually looking for is heavy caching and an offline first. The reason being that that synchronization of data is quite tough to get right. So if you find uh, libraries out there that will solve it for you, and you will find from Azure, you'll find offerings and others, um, it might be that in your special use case, it will just break, or it was not designed for that. If it's just synchronizing text between databases, there are solutions for that. But as soon as you've got uh, Binary files, images, audio, stuff like that. Stuff tends to get big and heavy. Um, that's when you want to be a bit more in control of your own. Now, I'm a bit short for time, so I'll make this demo really short. Um, <clears throat> so, what I've got here is um, this is the Monkey Cache official repository, and um, what what it allows you is <coughs> you can really easily uh, implement caching that comes along. They uh, it comes along with different barrels, and barrels is just like what you want to use to store your data. So you got um, you got SQLite, which is pretty much the industry standard. Um, you can also put it into um, a, uh, a file, like just a store into a file, and there's also um, LightsDB, uh, which I've, I've never used, but it's awesome. I hope. I, I got no idea, but um, I'm sure it's good. So, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, so, what you can do is like uh, if we invoke here this, uh, this action, what it then does, uh, what we can do is, um, let me just check. Uh, what am I on the wrong point? Um, sorry about this. Um, no. So what you literally do is um, you you can you can store you store your items in a key value fashion. So I'm not really finding it right now. 
Sorry about that. the minus. Uh, so how this actually works is, um, or this is quite often how it works. So what we do here is um, you can store you can store your your keys. So if you've got a URL that you're calling, you can just uh, simply. Um, so what we're doing here is we want to get monkeys. I, I warned you, Xamarin monkeys. It's it's a real thing. So we want to get this JSON file from this URL. So what we can, what we would do first is we would check: Do we have any connectivity to the interwebs? Again, something you will have automatically with Xamarin <coughs> Essentials. Uh, then we will, if we got no internet, we will just load this thing from the cache. We can use the URL as the cache. Then we can check further: um, Is it expired? I'll come to that in a second. <coughs> if it's not expired, get the URL from the cache. If the thing is expired, and only then. Uh, go through the hassle of um, starting up uh, a remote session to, to get this. Uh, word of advice, never instantiate new HTTP clients on the fly. Keep them around in a global member variable. You'll improve your performance. Um, so what we get here is we get the string, we get the JSON, and here we just say barrel current add. The key is again the URL. We get the data, which is our monkeys, uh, already serialized. And then we can say expire in, and we can give with it a time span. So this is how we can do caching quite easily. And it's, it's again, it really reduces your time. Depending on, on what you have, you might want to, um, you might want to do this differently. Uh, you also find a way how we can do this generic uh, or stuff like that. So you will find quite a few um, examples on here. Now, if your cache expires, Monkey Cache never really deletes your data. So even if you're like um, somewhere and you don't have any internet or internet costs you a fortune, um, the data will always be around, so you actually have to force delete this. Now there are other systems that you can use to implement caching or offline serialization. Uh, Azure offers you a data serialization thing which uses SQLite again in the background and automatically synchronizes your data. Um, but it, it, it really depends on your use case that you have, and this is pretty much like a Swiss Army knife approach of, of going offline. So, if you've got any additional questions to cash, please just, just ask me after this. It's, it's a really, really big topic. Um, I'm running really short on time, am I? I was, I was uh, before I was talking to David, so like, I really don't know if it will hit this hour. I'm, I really don't know if it'll be too quick. I'm not. Um, I just, I'll, I just wanted to show you one thing, and then, and then Thomas will give me the evil stare when I start to overshoot. You just do it. Just do it. Um, whenever you write a mobile app, you'll start to deploy it, and then you will always get that one guy that will give you feedback. And most people, they just, I don't know, don't care, don't have the time to give you the feedback, and they will come like, "Hey, I got this." Device never heard the name of, you know, like found it somewhere in a Chinese market when he was there, and uh, he's got like this error, okay. And the problem is, if you only get that feedback, like, like when people take their time to respond to it, you never really know are you hunting the real bugs, okay. And logging is really hard on a mobile device because if you log into a file, uh, yeah, I mean, you want to invite everybody over to plug in the device to get the log file, so that's not really an option. But it's, it's a common problem, so it's a solved problem again. And um, if you want to get started with logging, what's really helpful is Visual Studio App Center. So that's, uh, it's just, uh, you go to a place, if you, if you are interested in DevOps in general for mobile, this is a great place. You can build your mobile apps, you can run UI tests on it, you can distribute it, so you've got like a better testing platform, and um, <coughs> you can uh, analyze uh, for crashes, analytics, and you also got push notifications. So if you want to know what's happening, uh, use App Center for, for short. Um, so you log into App Center, it's actually for free, uh, this part that I'm showing you now. Uh, what you then can do is you create a new app. <coughs> you can then go to Xamarin Forms. 
it will tell you you've got to install the NuGet package. Uh, this is now for analytics. And uh, then you've got to add these lines of codes, or you just copy and paste them, which will be a lot quicker. And then you don't show the people this uh, string thing because that's like a little bit of a secret that you got there. So it'll be ending up in the right in the right pod. And what this will then enable you is in your code, you can then start to write analytics track event uh, note overview loaded. <coughs> and you can then view that on App Center. I'm, I'm really sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> it, it, would have been, it would have been great. So what you get is you, you get analytics, you get them for, for all your, your platforms that are deploying it to. They will all start sending up blog messages automatically to Visual Studio App Center. And what's really nice is you don't have to care if when I'm offline to stash it somewhere offline and then sending it up and all stuff. That's all, that's all handled in that Nougat package for you. So you get that all for free. And what's also really great is you get analytics and crash reports. So if your device crashes, so by just adding one Nougat package, whenever your device crashes, you will start to get crash reports. And they will be grouped. So if you get if you did one thing really wrong, you will see that that one thing really wrong starts popping up over and over and over and over, and over again. So you know, like, that's the real issue, not the one odd bug that the guy had on his strange phone. OK, that's what we want. And you can even go a step further. You can export the analytics into App Insights. So you get a dashboard for free, which shows you some great metrics. If you want to get additional metrics or something different, you can just simply export it into Azure and then uh, make your own queries. In the crash reports, what you could also do is oh, you can export it to uh, Azure DevOps, as it was called for earlier Visual Studio Team Services. And you could make automatic bug reports by that. I'm not a big fan of it because usually you end up just getting hosed with bug reports. But what I'm, what I'm trying to show you is this. This is not an island. This is not just something you shove in the data and you'll never get it back. So you can really get that feedback again back. So I hope I show you that if you are writing C Sharp and you want to make a mobile app, try it, Xamarin. Just give it a spin. Become part of write once and run everywhere. <laughs> Remaining beautiful. And uh, yeah really check out uh, what you can do with all the NuGet goodness. I, I didn't even show you the tip of the iceberg with all the NuGet packages that you can get. It's, uh, it's really great. And uh, yeah, it's all open source. So you can look how it's done. You can become part of this community. And this community really rocks. And I, and I know I'm part of the community, so it sounds a bit better. I'm, I'm talking about the other part, not this one. Okay, it's really cool. So if you're now thinking, well, Mark, how can I get started? Just open up Visual Studio Installer. Make a tick. This will install all the Android runtimes, Java stuff, and 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 will all be installed for you. And you can just get up and running. I also got here some links for you. So um, if you go to xamarin.com, you'll land on the, on the official Xamarin blog, uh, where they will inform you about all the latest and greatest. Uh, the Microsoft Learn has come up. You've got some really great courses uh, on Xamarin there. So if you want to get started and you want to have a step-by-step -step guide, check that out. It's really high-quality content. I can only recommend it. And a little self-promotion. My blog, uh, well, post regularly about Xamarin, and uh, I'll be posting uh, my slides and also the sample code so we can find it uh, on my Twitter feed. So that's been it. Are there any questions? No, no one fell asleep after lunch, so I'm happy with me. <laughs>